We've got a question from Linda. Linda says, my question relates to smoke drift from the balcony below my apartment, which I own. This makes it impossible to enjoy my balcony space. I go inside and turn on my air conditioning only to find a strong smoky smell is coming through my air con vents. Please help. So I'm um, sure Linda's not uh, alone in having a problem with smoke drift or smoke nuisance. Um, a lot of people are increasingly sensitive to the problem of smoke drift in body corporate communities. And it is a topic which has been in the news fairly recently. So the, the state of the law in Queensland is that lot owners are not allowed to cause a nuisance or a hazard for other people. So most people know what a nuisance means. Um, it's an objective test and it's something that bodies corporate have relied on to generally keep the peace and the good behavior of all residents in the community um, in a general sense. Now, smoking was always considered or has for some time been considered a nuisance, but it has been quite difficult for individual owners to prove that the amount of smoke that they are experiencing in their property is enough to be a nuisance to them in their daily life. So probably the, an analogy here would be if, it, if you have a dog and the dog bark one, barks once, um, that's probably not a nuisance. But if a dog barks for an hour at a time, that's probably a nuisance. So it's not just that the dog barks, it's how much it barks, what time of the day is it, and how long does each barking session last for. So same idea with smoking. Um, it, it used to be up to lot owners to prove that the smoke drift coming into their unit was causing a nuisance to their lives and really you know, was a significant issue that needed to be solved. Um, now there has been a recent change based on a, an adjudication decision. So a body corporate adjudicator in a Gold Coast case decided that because smoking is um, bad for people's health, which is not disputed, that any amount of smoke drift coming into a different person's property was not a nuisance, but a hazard. And a hazard is also something which owners can't cause to one another. So it changed smoking from being a nuisance discussion to a hazard discussion. And this particular adjudicator um, was quite bold in stating that any, any amount of smoke, even a tiny bit of smoke, is not good for your health and therefore is a hazard. So that's opened the door for a lot of owners who have suffered from smoke drift and smoke nuisance to make new arguments about smoke being a hazard and for bodies corporate to use the hazard argument instead of the nuisance argument to try and, and compel lot owners to smoke differently or smoke in a different area so that smoke drift does not transfer from one unit into another unit. So in terms of Linda's individual situation, um, the first step in any bylaw matter is to, is to bring the issue to the attention of the person causing the nuisance or the hazard. So it's quite possible that Linda's downstairs neighbor um, may not know about the effects that their smoking is having on Linda. There may be something quite straightforward for that unit owner downstairs to, to do about it. So they might be able to go and smoke in a different area in their property. Um, or they might be able to smoke indoors with the air conditioning turned on or something else. Um, so that would be the first step. Yeah, if that's unable to resolve the problem, then Linda would be able to make a, an application for conciliation or an application for adjudication and make an argument that the smoke drift into her unit is causing a health hazard. Now, in order to support those arguments, a lot of bodies corporate are considering modernizing their bylaws when it comes to smoking. So we've had quite a few buildings now go through the process of clarifying their smoking bylaws to make it more clear what is a nuisance versus what is a hazard and how to address those two different situations. Um, now, bylaws are for enforcement purposes, but they also serve a really important job, which is to disclose the rules to owners and try and achieve compliance through providing information up front. Um, another idea that a lot of um, bodies corporate are considering, previously, most bodies corporate had an outright ban of smoking on the common property. So the body corporate has always been able to ban smoking on the common property, but it cannot ban it within individual lots. 
So I've seen a few buildings now change their common property ban and instead of having a ban in the common property, designate a certain area away from the building as a smoking area and then say to residents, look, your smoking is causing a problem if you do it on your balcony, but we've created this designated smoking area. So why don't you go downstairs and across the path and here's a smoking area for you. So it's a different approach. It gives people a, an option to smoke um, on the common property rather than in their own unit. And maybe that takes the problem far enough away from the buildings where it no longer causes a nuisance.